Jonathan, I want you to take this hat off. Jonathan, I want you to take these hats off. Oh my God. Take this. He, he think he he Picasso or something. Take this beret off. Take this shit off, girl. Me, I ain't the only person holy worship me. Yeah, you can go to I ain't the only you so lonely and insecure. All right, before I get into it, make sure that you're going over to patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. We got a new podcast episode coming out over there. Y'all know each week the patrons tell me what they want me to talk about. And I make a podcast episode based on all the topics I get. So make sure you check it out. Link in my description. Let's go. Jonathan, you said that you wanted this woman, this woman. <laughs> to behave like Coretta Scott King and Michelle Obama or Michelle Obama. You said, I'm a great man, a great man. I do great things for my culture and for the world. That woman that supports me needs to be a great woman. <laughs> Girl, she need a grace. Grace need to be making a couple of casseroles, okay? She don't need to be trying to be nobody's uh, social studies history lesson or world history lesson. Girl, you got to be, Girl, you got to be kidding me, girl. Fucking government studies lesson bitch no she need to be doing yoga drinking coffee or playing volleyball or something like that girl she <laughs> Coretta Scott King now what why is she in it all right so this is coming from ABC Grace Jabari the accuser in the misdemeanor assault case against Jonathan Majors took the stand as the first witness on the second day of the trial Tuesday Jabari answered questions from assistant district attorney Kelly Galloway. Majors sat at the defense table, uh, entering the courtroom with current girlfriend, Megan Good Girl. Oh my goodness, child. Who has attended each day of the proceedings. He carried a cup and a Bible. <laughs> he carrying a Bible. He carrying around that fantasy novel. He carrying around that epic fantasy story, girl. Oh yeah, he did this. <laughs> he carrying around a Bible. Y'all didn't tell me he was carrying around a goddamn Bible in the court. <laughs> Get this nigga out of here, bro. So Jonathan Majors is accused of assaulting Jabari in the backseat of a four hire SUV on March 25th after she allegedly grabbed his phone when a message from another woman popped up that said, wish I was kissing you. Majors has pleaded not guilty to misdemeanor assault charges, harassment charges. He faces up to a year in jail if he's convicted. So let's get into what both Jabari and Jonathan Majors are saying about uh, the night of the alleged assault. She said it occurred as they returned home from dinner in a four hire Escalade. She said her head was resting on his shoulder and they were chatting as he was scrolling on his phone when a message popped up saying, I wish I was kissing you. Uh, so this is what Grace said. I was so taken aback. I was so shocked. I, I never considered infidelity to be one of the things that was happening. Um, so I was upset. She said, Jonathan denied the message had meaning but he was just really alert like he had been called out that's what she said she said i was saying let me see the messages let me see the messages so i grabbed his phone and turned away from him at that point she said she felt a heavy thud on top of me what i knew to be the weight of him on top of me and him trying to pry the phone out of my fingers she described majors pulling her right hand behind her back while holding the phone in her left I just felt like he was twisting my arm and my hand and trying to make me feel pain. When Galloway asked uh, her to describe her level of pain, Jabari responded, I had a lot of pain, but my emotional state was only thinking about the infidelity. I was just thinking, who is this girl? But Jonathan Major says that, you know, you know, this didn't happen like this. He said that she was the aggressor. So the defense is claiming that Grace slapped, clawed, and otherwise physically attacked Majors so blatantly that night. The driver of their four hire SUV called her psycho girl. Major's lawyer said during opening arguments that Grace emerged unscathed and unhurt while Jonathan Majors was left bloodied and ran to a hotel to hide from her. I'm like, okay, girl. <laughs> Okay, this is from the AP, which makes it sound even crazier, to be honest. This is what the AP said. Jonathan Majors' lawyer's claim is that once the driver pulled over, Jonathan Majors fled the scene with his phone as Jabari chased him on foot through traffic like in a movie. And those words are coming from the lawyer saying that it was like a movie that Jonathan Majors was just so scared running from Grace Jabari like this one. Girl, this girl, you're not, okay. Okay, let me keep reading. So like, like in a movie, unable to find Majors, Grace met three strangers and followed them to a Manhattan nightclub uh, where she spent the next few hours drinking and dancing. 
Uh, the prosecutor, though, says that Majors picked Jabari up and threw her inside the car on multiple occasions after the driver pulled over. He said she accepted the invitation of bystanders in hopes of temporarily blocking out the abuse committed by Majors. She returned home after a few hours at the nightclub, took two sleeping pills, and fell asleep on the floor of her bathroom. Jabari awoke the next morning to Majors standing over her with police officers, though Perez said she was initially reluctant to report the abuse because of how he's manipulated her in the past and trained her to stay silent she soon told police about the alleged assault leading to the arrest of jonathan major she was hospitalized with minor injuries six months later she was arrested by police after majors brought a counterclaim against her for assaulting him in the vehicle those charges were dismissed though by the manhattan da the following day perez referenced the arrest on monday telling jurors that majors attempt to control and intimidate Miss Jabari extended well after he assaulted her. So the claims are, you know, Jabari saying, hey, he physically assaulted me. And Jonathan Majors is saying, um, no, you physically assaulted me. And I was running through traffic um, like in a movie trying to get away from your ass, trying to hide from you. That's what the claims are. So going further, Grace Jabari details for the court um, the, like times where Jonathan Majors becomes like really angry, really aggressive, really mean. And that's when the recording of the the time where he asked her demanded shouting demanding her to act like coretta scott king that's that's kind of where this comes into play but the first incident we'll talk about is one jabari recalled from july 2022 when majors started throwing things at her in a home they were sharing in west hollywood the first thing that he threw was the candle Jabari said as she showed the jury a photo of the room. The dent in the wall is one of the candles. She used a pen to mark where uh, to mark the spot where she was standing. I took the photo because the shift in his temper was something that I was aware of. I just wanted to remember. I know I kept forgiving him, but I wanted to have a bit of a memory of it. Grace then talks about how she met Jonathan Majors on the set of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. They ended up going on dates. The relationship moved very fast. We spent every day together, maybe minus a few um, within the next few months. He told me he loved me very early on. She said, I felt very loved and cared for, but then obviously things took a shift. She said the first time Majors became angry with her was in uh, December 2021 when she was going to meet his dogs. Uh, she said Majors gave her specific instructions for how to behave around the dogs. At that point, Jabari mentioned to him um, that like she had an ex-boyfriend who had a dog. And she said at that, like he became very angry at that and raised his voice. How dare I mention him? Jabari quoted Majors telling her. Uh, it's embarrassing to him that I dated him. His dog is pathetic. This kind of stuff. It was the first time I felt scared of him. She told the jury she talks about other instances where he he's like really aggressive and stuff but i wanted to just focus on like what led up to this coretta scott thing one by september 2022 jabari was living with majors in london while he was shooting a movie she recounted a sunday when she had been at a pub with friends and returned to the house with them he was getting a bit snappy just quick with his responses she said jabari said she ushered everyone out the house the following day she said they met in a park where he accused her of being an alcoholic tore headphones off of her head and started shouting at her better not be in the house when i get home jabari quoted major saying that day jabari broke down in tears on the stand after recounting the story and asked the judge for a break when she resumed her testimony jabari said that she left the park and returned to the home she was sharing with majors and started to pack but froze when she heard majors coming he proceeded to grab everything and was just throwing it swinging it anything i had bought him he was breaking i just said you can stop i'm leaving just please stop she said it left her scared upset and confused and that he was blaming her because she disturbed the peace or something like that and so it says here the jury heard a recording jabari made with her iphone of majors shouting at her demanding she behave like coretta scott king or michelle obama <laughs> I'm a great man, a great man. I do great things for my culture and for the world. The woman that supports me needs to be a great woman. Um, Majors is heard on the recording saying, two nights ago, you did not do that, which took away from the plan. I'm just like, this, what super villain ass? <laughs> what plan you like he really think he came for real bro like you, you really like 
I do great things for my culture and the world. Like, he is, he's like one of the Avengers, bro. Like, for real. Like, for real. I just kept saying, I'm sorry, and I took all of the blame, Jabari testified. I just took the full blame to calm him down. She said she promised she would not tell anyone what happened and was left quite scared of him and yet dependent on him. After Majors would get upset with Jabari, she testified he would threaten suicide. He said that he was a monster and that he wants to kill himself and he has uh, put actions in place to do so. She said she pleaded with him not to and tried to make him feel safe and loved and secure. She said that Majors would blame her, say it was her fault that he got angry in the first place. Maybe he would say that he was sorry, but rarely. I just felt like I was existing in his world and emotionally and physically in all these ways and did not really feel my own autonomy. In general, January, the two relocated to New York. Jabari said she spoke to Majors' manager about his behavior because she needed some support. She told the jury it caused Majors to stop talking to her for a couple weeks. So yeah, the fact that she played a recording of him in court shouting at her ass, telling her <laughs> she it's just not helping his case the way like what she has set up, right? Um, just establishing certain patterns of his behavior, right? And his rage, his aggression, his shouting and, sh and shit. And so when you tell me, uh, Majors, when your lawyers tell me that you were running from her ass, like running because you were so scared of her ass. I mean, and your your lawyer actually said the words, you were running through traffic like a, like it was like, a, like in a movie, like in a movie. Um, and you were hiding from her versus her showing the court hard evidence of you being aggressive at least the the recording you could say it at the very least right um the record the, like she has this recording of you shouting at her ass it's just not it's not looking too good for you ma mama it's not like i'm so sorry so i mean obviously like i said this is just you know the the, the case is just opening up at this point so we're gonna see more things more arguments maybe some more evidence right um, but as of right now, as of this moment, it still ain't looking too good for Mr. Mamas. Actually, it's looking worse. Uh, mind you, it's looking, it's looking worse for Mr. Majors. Like she really said, he said like, you need to make sure you walk around here like a civil rights leader. You need to be walking around here like a black politician. All right. And when you gather around us and sing, you know, wade in the water and shit, you better put some blue eyes soul in that hole. I'm walking around here because if he think, if, listen, if she, if he telling her that she need to be Coretta Scott and Michelle, Obama, he really think he am okay. Like he really walking around here like he think he am okay, girl. Like he really, he's about, to, he's changing the nation. He is, you know, the pinnacle, right? Like he's Kang for real, girl. Like, <laughs> wow, wow. I know Coretta Scott King somewhere like, girl, I, now why am I in this? Why am I in it? I already had to deal with one cheating ass nigga. I don't need two. I need another one. Why? Why is my name in your mouth? The shit that Grace is describing really is giving abusive, narcissistic rage. Um. So yeah, that's that's what it's looking like to me. So, um. But yeah, we gonna follow the case. We are gonna see what's happening. Thank you so much for watching. Love y'all so much. And make sure that you have a good goddamn evening. <laughs> Control me, control me, boy, you can't control me, troll me.